Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on uh, resolving convergence issues that appears while performing earthquake analysis or seismic analysis using OpenSys. In nonlinear time history analysis, it is very common to encounter convergence challenges when trying to simulate a full earthquake accurately. In this tutorial, we will present a popular technique that can help us overcome these convergence issues. Along with the OpenSys Pi module, we are going to use a few other libraries, matplotlib, numpy, for performing the analysis and for post-processing the results. And also we are going to use a module called uh, OS. So we use this module for performing some housekeeping operations such as uh, creating and deleting files. Here I set the DPI for uh, matplotlib plots to 300. I did this for generating high resolution plots. For this tutorial, let's consider the Imperial Valley earthquake event occurred in 1979 at uh, Chihuahua. The time step used in the acceleration time history is uh, 0 0.01. If we take the ground motion as it is, we would not get any convergence issues. Hence, to demonstrate the convergence issues, I have amplified the acceleration time history of the original ground motion using this scale factor. There are several methods to derive this scale factor. For example, based on target PGA, based on spectral acceleration, etc. We will discuss these techniques in detail in our next project on incremental dynamic analysis. For now, in this tutorial, I have considered a simple random numerical value which we will multiply with the original ground motion to get the amplified ground motion, also called a scaled ground motion. If we keep the scale factor as 1, then the ground motion remains unchanged. Any value greater than 1 will scale up the ground motion and any value less than 1 will scale down the ground motion. Here we load the earthquake data using np.loadtxt into an array called acc data. The np.loadtxt function is a part of numpy library and is commonly used for reading numerical data from text files. Next we determine the number of steps in the imported ground motion. The shape attribute of the acc data array returns the dimensions of the array and in this case we are interested in the size of the first dimension which corresponds to the number of data points. Next we generate a series of time steps using np.a range. This array represents the time values corresponding to each data point in the ground motion data. Now that we have the ground motion data and the corresponding time range, let's plot this uh, acceleration time history. This is how the imported acceleration record looks like this. The PGA value is 0.254 which occurred at 12.43 uh, seconds. The overall length of the ground motion is approximately some 52 or 53 seconds. Next we multiply the original acceleration time history with the scale factor and get the scaled acceleration time history. This scaled ground motion I am saving in a file called dummy file underscore eqdata.txt. This is a temporary file. It will be deleted after the analysis is done. Let's plot the scaled ground motion. This is the scaled ground motion. It looks exactly same as original record, but the values are different. The new PGA is 0 0.3305, which occurred at the same 12.43 second. Let's import the gravity analysis file. This gravity analysis procedure is explained in detail in project number one of the civil engineering projects, link of which is given in the description of this tutorial video. I recommend you to please go through the project for detailed information about finite element modeling, material and element definitions, cross section definition using popular fiber section modeling, visualizing the finite element model, etc. etc. To be consistent with the units considered in the gravity analysis, I defined the acceleration due to gravity as 9810 millimeter per second square and I defined the mass at the top node of the column as shown here. After that I defined two recorders, one for recording the reaction forces at the base node and the other for recording displacements at the top free node. Next after the completion of gravity analysis we move on to the earthquake analysis. The analysis settings, damping definition etc are similar to the ones used in part 1 of this project and the main difference comes after the analyze command. As I said before this analyze command returns zero if the analysis is successful else it returns some non-zero value like this. It returned minus 3 error flag here. Along with that, OpenSys also gives us some important information such as the time at which the analysis failed. Here the algorithm failed at 12.67 seconds. Norm values as per the test command that we have given. In this analysis type, we have given um, energy increment test command. So in compliance with that, it has provided this uh, norm delta x, norm delta r, this indicates that the analysis is successful up to this time. After that, it was unable to move ahead with the current settings. 
Now we approach this convergence issue by trying out a variety of test methods and algorithms available in OpenSys. These test methods and algorithms play a very important role in analyzing the problematic step. Here we defined a, a set of all test methods and algorithms available in OpenSys. The test methods helps us measure the discrepancy or imbalance in the analysis. On the other hand, the algorithm provides different strategies for finding the solution. I have written a while loop. Within that, I defined two for loops to verify all possible combination of uh, test methods and algorithms. If the analysis at a fail step got success for a particular combination of test method and algorithms, then the for loop will break and will not try out other combinations. Else, this will keep on trying the other combinations of test methods and algorithms until the analyze command returns zero. That means the analysis is successful. This while loop continues till the time in the domain reaches the maximum time applied. After the analysis is done, this program prints seismic analysis successful statement. Let's run the analysis with this approach. The analysis is successfully completed. Time in the domain T current is 51.59 seconds and the total applied time is also 51.59 seconds. It means the analysis is completed successfully. Now let's visualize the displacement and reaction force data obtained from the simulation. The maximum displacement obtained is 82.12 mm at 13.26 seconds. That's it. This is one popular way of handling convergence issues in OpenSeas. In future, we will discuss several other techniques to handle convergence issues in uh, reverse cyclic analysis and uh, earthquake analysis. If you have any questions or suggestions, we recommend you to please write them in the comment section below the video. We greatly appreciate your feedback and we will do our best to respond to each and every comment. If you like our content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Happy learning. Thank you.